All right, so cricket is where we start this fantastic Friday on The Zone. West Indies had a good start to their preparation for the T20 World Cup, beating South Africa by 28 runs in the first of three T20s at Sabana Park in Kingston on Thursday. The Proteus elected to field first, but standing skipper Brandon King spoiled their plans, smashing 79 or 45 deliveries to lead the home team to 175 for 8 of their allotment. Cal Mayers and Roston Chase supported their captain's efforts with 34 and 32, respectively. With the ball, debutant Otneil Bartman and Dile Pleyukwayo with the player with the pick of the bowlers with three wickets each. But chasing 176 for victory, the South Africans never recovered from losing Quinton the Cock with the second delivery of the innings, losing five wickets for 78 runs before eventually being dismissed for 147 with one ball remaining. Riza Hendricks fought valiantly with 87, while spinner Gurukesh Moti and Seema Matthew Ford had three wickets apiece. Well, as we said at the top of the show, Nikhil, he joins us today on this Friday. Nikhil, you were here in Kingston, Jamaica for the live cricket. Let's start by talking about a winning performance from the West Indies and almost filled Sabino Park. Yeah, hi, Maria. Hi, Ricardo. It's great to see everything except that shirt, um, Maria. <laughs> well, I have to wear a shirt on the show. You know that, right? Just not that one. Anyways, <laughs> we'll get to that. Um, when, I, when I talk about or think about the Kingston crowd yesterday, one thing reminded me straight away, and that's Ricardo Chambers, that shirt. It's so similar to the people. <laughs> Vibrant, effervescent, lively. I mean, look at that shirt. Oh, masterpiece. But no, on a serious note, I really want to give um, the Jamaican people a lot of credit. I think what they did yesterday was sort of make a statement that cricket is alive and well in Jamaica. There's still a passion for it. I was overwhelmed to see um, how many people were there and talking to some of the players it made a huge difference especially for some of the younger ones like a Matthew Ford who bowled the last over to hear that sort of roar when he got those couple of wickets or just to see that sort of force behind him when he would go back to the boundary it was amazing to see and I really hope that can be sort of a precedent going forward when cricket returns here I think Bangladesh are coming in the summer yeah so that's something to really look forward to and I think what makes the entire atmosphere and storyline even better is the Jamaicans got to saw got to see one of their very own Brandon King be a king yeah no it was it was a supreme innings I would say um, something that I think innings that showed me the evolution of Brandon King when he started sort of his career and his journey, he was mainly known for his offside play, his stroke play in the offside, very strong through extra cover, a lot of cover drives, exquisite. But he always had that sort of weakness when they bowled straight to him. And yesterday, it was an exhibition of straight bowling. And credit to South Africa, they stuck to their plan. But I think the way he just sort of adapted, and it's not easy surface to bat on as we saw throughout the day, but just the range of shots that he had, the dominance, and he has something, some connection with Sabina Park. Three innings, 350s in T20 cricket. Yeah, he also, in his post-match interview, spoke about how difficult it was to bat. So when he was asked about the batting collapse of the rest of his players, his team, he was sure to say that, you know, it was not difficult, although it was not easy, although I got 75. Brandon King, though, as a captain, mm. I'd love to get your assessment on that. Yeah, obviously, first time captain in the West Indies. Um, I enjoyed some of the decisions he made. There are a few interesting ones, but in terms of the ones I enjoyed, the shuffling of the bowlers, I think, especially in that first power play, it was only Shamar Joseph that bowled too. But just trying to mix things up all the time, constantly thinking proactively. The one decision I was quite surprised by, and I know Ricardo's going to come in on this, but Fabian Allen bowled four overs yesterday, and Aki Hossein, who's a T20 World Cup bowler, only bowled one. Obviously, both left arm spinners. So. Maybe some Jamaican connection there, um, but look. Or maybe they're just giving the other players an opportunity. No, I hear you, themselves. but I'm just thinking if you have a T20 World Cup in eight days, you want to get the guys who are playing sort of the most reps in. That's why I was kind of surprised that Aki only bowled one. Mm. What say you? I mean, Nikhil wants your view on that. Come on, Ricardo. Come I think, on. I think Nikhil already has a view on that. I don't think I need to add but anything to that But we'd love to, to hear one. yours. But, but I do want to know from Nikhil, though, whether... <laughs> One, you learned anything new mm. from watching, and I know it's not the full strength squad, but from watching this West Indies team yesterday, um, or if anything was reinforced mm. about this West Indies setup from the performance yesterday. Dear God, thank you for this opportunity. <laughs> I want to say thank God to Ricardo for asking this question because the one thing I learned, Ricardo, yeah. was that Roston Chase has to play every single game at the T20 World Cup, <laughs> oh, and I'll explain oh. why. 
Two Whoa. months ago, two months ago, it was on the Sports Mat Zone that I said yeah. to Ricardo, this man must be considered. And he did, hasn't got much opportunity. But what he showed yesterday, obviously, they lost four wickets inside three overs. For me, he was the difference between 150 and 175. And people will look and say, well, 32 off 30 is not that good. But mm -hmm. on that pitch, which changed significantly as it got drier as the day went on, it was such an important innings. But the bowling, to get Quinton de Kock, two overs for 12 runs on a wicket, one of them in the power play, I just think the flexibility this man gives you, the luxury he gives you as a team. I learned yesterday that Roston Chase must play every game of the T20 World Cup for the West Indies. Yeah, if he is playing every game, where are you batting him, first of all? At number four. In every game? No, Re of Regardless not. of the situation? No, I wouldn't say in every single game. Uh, I, for me, he would start at four in a yeah. place like Guyana where they have their first two games. Yeah. But I can that easily see in a place like St. Lucia where a team may have a lot of left-handers, like in Afghanistan where they'll play them. I can easily see him batting at eight or nine because of how much power they have. But again, he can play as a frontline bowler to bowl three to four overs, or he can play as someone who can bat at four and give you two, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm actually happy that you, you, you brought up this point because I think it's a very important one yeah. because there are some other questions that come on the mm. back of that. One, I just asked about where you would bat him, but the other, as it relates to how many spinners you foresee um, the selectors going with, and whether the surfaces right across the Caribbean are expected to play in a similar way to what we saw at Sabina Park yesterday. Um, I said on commentary, I think the pitches will be better than what we saw yesterday. And mm. simply because of the funding that the ICC has given the Caribbean to get pitches ready, there's been ample time. There's no cricketing activities have happened at these venues for about two months. Yeah. And that's solely to get these pitches ready. And I think about somewhere like Guyana, where obviously it's spun religiously for years. But actually going to CPL last year, the Guyana pitch was really good. There was green grass on it. Um, and I think it could be quite good, better than people expect. So teams are coming here. You look, think about India, who have brought four spinners. The West Indies will have three to four spin options as well. But I actually think they'll be quite good. However, the maintenance has sort of been our issue from West Indian perspective. As we get deeper in the tournament in the Super 8s, I could then see a lot of spin coming into play, which is why I think Roston is, is quite important. Yeah. Do you see any point of the World Cup where the West Indies may, say, play three spinners? Yes, I do. I think um, definitely deeper into the tournament, when you have a place like Antigua where they have a Super 8s game, or even sometimes a Barbados, they're so dry that I can easily see a Moti, Aki Hossein, different type bowlers as we saw yesterday, and Rossen because of his batting ability, being there as a supporting role. Yeah, and as we're talking about players and singling them out, Cal Mayers, mm. he also batted on that difficult pitch yesterday, got 34 of 25 balls, and we discussed that when we were discussing the World Cup squad. What about him getting a nod in? Yeah, why I like that innings from Mayers yesterday, listen, Kyle Mayers is someone who we know is all out aggression, all out attack. What he did yesterday when he came in, Brandon King was obviously going sensationally well at the other end. And even against some left arm spinners in 14, usually Mears would say, look, that's my matchup, I'm taking him down. But he was 10 off his first nine balls yesterday. Yeah. There was a clear intent from him to understand, look, situationally, I can't afford to be dismissed. Let me get Brandon on strike. As soon as Brandon was dismissed, then Mears sort of took over. So for me, it was sort of a mature innings from his perspective. And I think he's understanding he's got to show a bit more now, given that he wasn't selected. Yeah. Just by the way, quickly, I want to make the point that I never said Roston Chase was not a good cricketer. I just want to remind our viewers of that. I just believe that the T20 format is not the best format for him and that he could help West Indies um, a lot more in another format, in the longer formats, and especially in the test format. I believe that's where he should have been concentrated over the last two years. And if the focus had been put there, then he could serve West Indies in the longest format even better than Nikhil feels he can serve the West Indies in the T20 format. But I've never said he's not a good cricketer because I do believe he is a good cricketer. I just believe he's been forced into the wrong format. On another note, <laughs> since... Now that you cleared the air. Now that I've cleared the air, not for the first time. Um, South Africa, how much better do you expect them to be for the remainder of the series? Because they were slow to get away um, yesterday. I felt in those first 10 overs when they bowled, probably too much pace on. Mm. And once they started taking pace off the ball, you saw the difference. And clearly the West Indies learned from that as well. Mm, you sound like a commentator, Ricardo. Impressive, man. Um, <laughs> what I'll say is, I think for the West Indian fans, don't expect this to be a walkover. South Africa have got three spinners in their squad. 
I, I fully expect to see all three of them for the next two games. I think they sort of misread conditions yesterday when they went with just the one spin option West Indies had four, and then obviously winning the toss and bowling on a pitch where, because it's so dry, you probably want to bat the earliest that you can, which yeah. is what, where Brandon King batted and sort of exploited conditions. So I expect them to be a lot better. Obviously, this is a huge adjustment. When you compare the fact that they played close to 30 games this year domestically in South Africa on very flat pitches, bouncy tracks, small boundaries, no real win factor. This is a huge change for those guys. Yeah. So I expect them to be sort of t to adapt, but also to take a lot from Reza Hendricks not. Yeah. Yeah, and, and quickly, as you mentioned, Reza Hendricks, why is he so good against the West Indies? Um, obviously, he's had a great year mm. um, in T20 cricket. But compared to every other team he's faced, I think he's striking at 162 mm. against the West Indies, three half centuries, 440-odd runs in 11 matches. Against everybody else, he's striking somewhere between 80 and 135. Mm. What is it about the West Indies bowling that he likes so much? Well, to be honest, I think that's the question that the West Indies would try to figure out as well. But just watching him, obviously I saw him um, in South Africa last year. He got consecutive 50s. And now yesterday, another 50. But... The biggest thing was sort of just the adapt, I would say the ability to adapt in these conditions. South Africa, where you got the 50s, Centurion, the Bullring and, and Johannesburg, very good for batting. Yesterday though, that was a real challenge. And yeah. the way he sort of mitigated that not even the fact that he had to bat with the tail at the other end, he's, in my opinion, one of their better players of spin. And I think that's why he'll be so critical when the World Cup comes around. He'll definitely open alongside Quinton the Cot. But if he can bat maybe 10 to 12 overs, I think they'll know for sure with the amount of power that they have in that World Cup team, they'll be easily getting over 220, 230. Will the Cock play with his form? He's struggling badly. <sighs> yeah, he yeah. is struggling. But I think just given his track record, you think about that last World Cup, 400s at the one international World Cup, he ha I think he'll start. Yeah, mm. and we're going to wrap now, but Shamar Joseph, we can't leave the segment without. Mm. It was so good to see him in real. Yeah, yeah. no. I, <laughs> <laughs> no, because we looked at him do brilliant things in the test match. Ricardo, you have to remember, I'm a lover of the game. No, it's just before. because you said in real. Yeah, <laughs> and then I see I see him bowling and, of mm. course, you know, the speed at which he does it and everything, Nikhil. Brilliant. Yeah, to be honest, I was interested to see what role they have in playing. Sami said he wants him to bowl the new ball, and which is why he bowled two in the power play yesterday. But the ability he has is at that pace, if he can hit a good length this consistently, the control of length has been very good. It was good in the test series and good yesterday. Because of that pace, he does get the ball to do a bit off a good length. I think it's what makes him sort of a dangerous option. Yeah. How does he then fit into a bowling attack with Alzari Joseph, Romario Shepard, Andre Russell, maybe a Jason Holder? It's just, I want to see how they fit him into that World Cup team, but I fully expect him to play all three of these games and probably continue to bowl two in the power play. Yeah, yeah. well, what's for sure is the first D20 did not disappoint us at all, and we have two more really looking forward to those two T20 here in Jamaica. So we're going to take a quick break. Nikhil is not taking a break. He'll stay on with us for the next segment. We'll be back. <laughs> 